know, um, guests from around the world. And we have Hannah and Gareth uh, with us. Yes, they yeah. are live from <laughs> Wales. Uh, so it's great to see you. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, we're doing really good. We've literally just finished our service probably five minutes ago. So yeah. um, quick, quick turnaround and um, straight, straight on to here. But it's, it's so great to, you know, connect with you. And I, what, what's really exciting, being able to use technology, you know, it says in Acts about, you know, the church, the early church would gather together in one place. And That's I love right. that idea that we can, we can be physically uh, distance but, but spiritually together in one yeah. place I, I love that idea so yeah it's, it's great to join you yeah um, we're really excited to be with you we feel that connection actually so you know this is quite exciting that we planned this so one it's great to see you but um we're just really connected so what you've been active in the lockdown as a church really active and we've been having regular conversations uh, throughout the weeks but just tell us all who are watching what what's god doing during this period for you at uh, newbridge uh, right in the heart mm. of what the welsh valleys yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it's been really exciting for us. Um, those of you that don't know our journey, nine months ago, we um, were sent out from Riverside Church to here in Wales to a place called Newbridge. And tomorrow is exactly nine months since we um, wow. came here. Wow. We really believe that's quite significant that's for us in our journey. Um, nine months has been a time of really, um, like, God gave us a really clear vision. And it was like the conception of that vision that we would see revived hearts, restored yeah. hope and rebuilt lives and revive a story build more than ever as being like the echo of everything that we're doing in this season and it feels like we're really giving birth to that vision wow. and the timing right now of it being nine months tomorrow is just really significant yes. for us wow, and we yes. just you know god do some incredible things um like you were doing online church we're seeing connections from all across the world people tuning in the first week Great. we did on mother's day we couldn't believe it but we had someone from baghdad joining yeah. us um, and his mum comes to our church and for the first time on Mother's Day, they're able to see church online together. We've seen lots of families who have got um, people that are far away or that have either moved away, but also far away from God that are now tapping into mm. church online every week. And it's just been an incredible time yeah. for us. Just seen an open doors into schools in our local wow. area. So we'd just got into them in January, but since being on lockdown, we're starting to do assemblies in our back garden. <laughs> And um, just being able to send those to go online through two schools in our local area, which has been yeah, yeah. really, really exciting. And um, yeah, we've just been doing lots of things with our families. Do you want to tell us a bit about toddlers? Yeah, so we, um, we've had a, a really thriving toddler group for since before we, we got to Newbridge. Mm, they get okay. probably between 50 and 100 um, sets of parents come in on, wow. on Tuesday morning. And it's wow. absolute carnage, but it's the best <laughs> the best fun in the week. Um, it is chaos. Yeah, I'm um, sure. the, the, the parents are fantastic and they really, you know, they love the women who run toddlers. These women are in their 90s um, and they are running around chasing these two year olds. It's, it's the most insane thing you'll ever see. But the, the connection that is there in the community feel that's in that room is, is powerful. And we've just been able to to tap into that and, and, and step in a little bit more from a spiritual angle. Um, we're doing regular uh, we do a, we're, we're setting up a baby bank and a, and a toddler bank so that so that families particularly um, around our area can come in um, can either do a clothes swap or we've been able to buy in a load of baby clothes a load of baby equipment and we've just said to you know mums in need here it is how can we bless you how can we give you and resource you um, and that's been really good we're having really good conversations with different parents um, we're having parents who who've got children in toddlers now their their youth their older children are now coming to our youth we're having great conversations wow, with great. them so great. starting to you know penetrate into yeah. into families around us which is fantastic yeah it's just been amazing because this has all been happening online as well so we're doing zoom youth like you probably are and uh, <laughs> and uh, even with toddler tuesdays that's an online um toddler time that we put wow, out great. there and just seeing the families connect and also them responding with their needs as well so being able to put food parcels together go and drop off clothes and different things that they need in this season it's been a real outreach for yeah, us yeah 
So cool. we've got um, people watching online now, and just to let you know, if you're watching from home, um, you can just go onto the comment section mm. uh, and you can send a message to Hannah and Gareth. They will be able to see this uh, because it will be recorded and yeah. left yeah. on the Facebook page so they can go through. So if you want to communicate and just put a shout out to them, uh, feel free uh, to do that as well. But this is a prayer meeting. so. It is indeed, and it's so awesome to see what you guys are up to. We love watching all of your videos, especially when you and Gareth are dressed up in tiger onesies. <laughs> I love that. If you haven't seen it, please check it you out on Facebook. You must go to that. It's, it's such a good it's thing. It's hilarious. But, but guys, what can we pray for yes, for you in the next few to. months? Um, I think for us, we've really felt um, stirred by particularly our toddler families, you know, there, there's hundred or right. so families. Um, so we're looking in the next uh, 12 to 18 months is getting a baby bank set up there is already one that we run but it's, it's quite ad hoc so we just want to put okay. a bit of organization right. a bit of strategy yeah. behind it um do some you know applications for funding to really make it a, a purpose uh, purposeful um outreach for, for those toddlers we are looking at the idea now don't tell our church this but we're looking at the idea of kind of finding a shop that's in newbridge that we can hire a shop front and have a, a baby wow. bank and a, and a, and a wow. center that um, parent toddlers can come in and just be resourced. We've we've had conversations with different churches and different organisations, and there doesn't seem to be. We we talked about a food bank, but there doesn't seem to be that need um, in Newbridge for a food bank. But what they need is is these young parents who need yeah. things for their toddlers and need things for their children. So we're really just if you could pray pray for that, pray for favour with yeah. with funding um, that we'd find the right. Mm -hmm. um, potentially the right place to host it and just that god would be really in it and we'd have a, a great impact in the community i think alongside that obviously like yourselves we're looking at recovery planning now and mm. looking at a strategy for the next um 18 months as lockdown starts to lift yeah. um and with that not to lose our connections with mm. a lot of the yeah. people that have been connecting into church but also looking at more innovative and creative ways of connecting with people oh. and part of that is the vision to be able to get yeah. out into the community, get yeah. out into the places where people are, to really be able to meet those needs in in a in a specific way. And for now, we feel like that is very much on our hearts for a baby yeah. bank, yeah. uniform bank for those parents yeah. that are going to be struggling to get uniform for their kids because of loss of work and so on. Um, and also just for the church to really be mobilised by the vision and to really be activated in this season to be ready and prepared for when we do yeah. start going into right. whatever the new normal is, yeah. to see hearts revived, hope restored and lives rebuilt and, and in all areas, both practically and spiritually, that the church really grab hold of that and move forward um, with us into that season. Yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing was maybe not necessarily for for the for the church, but um, if you've seen on the news about the BA closures, BA closing down yeah, um, several factories, they're probably the second biggest employer in the area. Right. Um, so there's wow. a, there's a huge factory in in Newbridge that produces a lot of um, mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. um, military equipment we don't really know what they make because it's all it's all really heavily locked down but there's a big ba factory sure. that is probably the second biggest employer around course, um yeah. so that's going to have a huge impact on the on the community so yeah. just if you could pray into that that would be really so great we're going to pray now um so just for the way that we've set this up people are going to be in their homes praying we've got paul um who's in studio two who's just going to lead us through a song and this is what we want you to do at home we want you to take those prayer requests uh, and we want you to lift Hannah and Gareth and their family and their church um, and that community up yeah. because I believe God is speaking to some of you right now. If you want to put those prayers up on your comments, feel free. If you feel God is saying to something about their situation, type those comments on. If it's quite long, take some time to think about it and send that in and we will send it on to Hannah and Gareth as a declaration of the word of God because God is here. Um, don't wander off the call we're, we're just whispering we're praying with you um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to pray those words over you Anna and Gareth if that's all right thank so, you thank you Paul we really appreciate you coming into studio two for us uh, to do that let's pray for Hannah and Gareth yeah
Is your faithfulness, yeah, I will rest in your promise. Thanks, Paul. Um, if God has spoken to you uh, during that period, um, then type those up because it's really important that you're being to listen to God on behalf of it. They will re receive those words, um, you know, with anticipation. Of that. Let's pray uh, over those requests right now. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, Father God, we thank you for Gareth and Hannah, God, and Naomi, and we lift them up to you, Father God, and we honour them for responding and jumping when you said go, Father God. We thank you. We thank you that you have been working in their hearts and speaking to them, Father God, and we pray right now over their ministry, Father God. We want to thank you for the, for the great ideas that you have given them, Father God, and the way that you have spoken and that you are using them. And Father God, we pray as they as they continue to move forward, God, would you just be with them? Would you assist them with the baby bank, Father God? We pray for wisdom of how to set that up in the best way possible, God. And I pray for open doors in the shops, Father God. I pray for open opportunities, Father God, that they will see your hand in, in it and through all of it, Father God. That they will see that you are moving in new and exciting ways, Father God. I pray would you bring the right people in around them to support them and to push that vision forward, Father God. And we pray over the families as well. God, we thank you for the opportunity they have to minister to, to younger children, to the youth and to the parents as well, Father God. And we thank you that you are restoring families in Newbridge, Father God. And yeah, thank you, God. We, just, we pray right now as well in the recovery period, Father God, as we move out of this season of, of shutdown and lock-in, Father God. I pray, would you would you maintain those connections and would you... Would you just protect them? And Father God, I pray, would you bring the right people into the church, Father God, that yeah. they won't buy yeah. out, but they will buy in, Father God, that yeah. what they've experienced will be something that they cannot walk away from, Father God. I pray that you'll bring them in on Sunday mornings, that they have the opportunity, opportunities to minister face-to-face -face and to yeah. build the relationships in better and more yeah. personal levels, yeah. Father God. I thank you that you are really moving in that area. And yeah, Father God, we pray over the whole community. Yes, God. Father God, as as there are as there will be unemployment in the next few months because the company shut down. Father God, I pray where this door has closed, you will open other doors. 
yeah. Father God, that you will open up new jobs for these for these people and these families and these communities, Father God. And I pray that this will not be an opportunity for the community to break, but rather for the yes. community to pull together, to just to, just to bundle together as a family and, and as your family, Father God, and just stand before you and say, God, we know you have yes. a plan in this. We don't understand it. But Father God, we pray that your wisdom and your guidance will be so obvious to these families and to the community yeah. as a whole. Father God, I pray that this time in a few months, we will look back and see how you have been with yes. the community every single step of the way. Yeah. Father God, and that how yes. you have brought them through this. We thank you for your goodness. Amen. So I yeah. go, um, just as you're speaking, just got this clear image, it's like this um, ploughed field, you know, and it's a big field really, and it's all about this kind of, when you're talking about the recovery um, and planning for that, I feel that God is just moving in Newbridge and has ploughed the field, and I can see the furrows and the lines already set, and I think God has placed you, you know, because I can see you coming in and just dropping in these seeds, you know, row after row after row after row, you know, and this season that there's going to be just new growth that's just going to burst out post-lockdown, you know, this isn't damaging this is god actually put a new bridge for a level of fallow reflection yeah. and out of that you're just going to so move good. into that because god has moved into the position yeah you know for such a time as this so just may the spirit of god continue to work in your obedience in your faithfulness and in your gifting um, and just keep sowing because I, I just see this this in due season yeah. this rich yeah. rich harvest so that will impact the community you know this is actually <laughs> more than church this is community transformation yeah. and, and God's yeah. given you those seeds um, yeah, yeah. would you be willing to pray for us because you know we're always good for yeah. that isn't it we, we part that yeah, no, we'd, we'd love to. Um, just, to, just to encourage you, we would um, obviously with today being Pentecost. There was something I read as I was reading my Bible this morning. It said you, we get the, the passage of the Holy Spirit coming and, and filling the place, but then it says um, something that just really stood out to me as I was reading. It says um, at the time they were they were Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the noise everyone came running yeah. and there's something about that phrase that just really spoke to me that actually as, as churches all over the nation we're making a huge noise at the yeah. moment yeah. and i just really feel and i want to kind of speak it into into what you're doing that you're making a huge noise in exeter and people are going to come running to to hear what you're saying but actually then what they hear is in their own language yeah. so what they hear is something that they can access something that they can enter into and something they can understand so so i less a prayer but more than I just want I want to speak that over you yeah. but I just want to read um, from Isaiah 16 it says this arise Jerusalem let your light shine for all to see for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you darkness as black as night covers the nations of the earth but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you all nations will come to your light mighty things will come to see your radiance look and see for everyone is coming home yeah. Yeah. and i just want to speak that over you and everything you're doing uh, in exeter that the people will see your light they will hear your noise yeah. and they will start to come home yeah. thank you God, we pray right now by your Holy Spirit, Father God, that you would come and your light would continue to shine in every home, in every person's life who is connected to Riverside Church. Father God, as they're reaching out into the community, Father God, your light would shine. There would be a light that is so bright that people will be running to you, Father God. They will be running to you because of the church being a beacon of light that is just shining so brightly and directing people to your love and yes. to your hope. Father God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that there will just be a great expansion on the church at this time. I read this um, just this week and it just really stirred my heart and it's from Scattered Servants, Alan Scott. It says this, move on, move, move on in faith and move out in God's favour. Understand your identity yes. and unlock your authority. Yes. Develop faith that isn't just strong enough to survive the culture and the season that we're in but is bold enough to transform it the dream of god over your church over riverside church is that you become alive in his presence and bring life to every environment that it will be a contagious hope into a hurting community so i believe that god is just saying it is a time of looking out is a time of bringing your identity and unlocking your authority that people would begin to understand and have a full revelation of who 
Jesus is in this season as you just continue to stretch out in faith you reach out and you look beyond your building you will see God do incredible things as you just share contagious hope into the community and beyond so we just bless you we thank God for you and we're just really encouraged to be part of this today. That's great. I've, I've, I'm so encouraged and, you know, feel God's presence, both in the relationship and in what we're all saying and, and praying. Could you text that through to us if that's all right? You know, because I, I really love that. Put that on the feed uh, and then people can hold on to it. We need to say yeah. goodbye because we're going to bring in our next guest. But So just wave to us all on the screen. And uh, Naomi, you. if you're hiding in the background, we know you're yeah. there somewhere. We, we love you. We're missing you. <laughs> Uh, we can't wait to see you soon, but thank you very much yeah. for helping see us. See you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thanks, Paul. If you could just lead us through while we do the transitions, that'd be great. Yeah, take care. See you. So uh, welcome back here. Um, we're now moving from the, the hills and the valleys um, of Wales to South Africa. Uh, and so uh, how is it in South Africa? Eric and Sunil, um, your missionaries who we've supported and you're from the church doing great things. Yes. How is it out there? Tell us about what South Africa looks like. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're excited for tomorrow to come. Um, I mean, South Africa has been on a very, very strict lockdown since the 24th of March, basically. Um, so April, we were not even allowed out wow. to leave the house. Um, the only time we were allowed to leave the house was to go and do grocery shopping or to go to the doctors or anything like that. So no walking, no running, wow. nothing like that. Oh, um, May, the restrictions have been eased a little bit, um, and we're allowed to go for a walk between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., um, <laughs> which, is not, which is not... Prime time for walking. Not, which is not easy to do when you have two kids that yeah. are trying to sleep and... Uh, then you're both exhausted and by nine o'clock it's breakfast, it's getting them ready and you're like, okay, nine o'clock. Okay, I guess we're stuck in the house the whole day. Um, and then tomorrow we're allowed out. We're allowed out whenever we want. Um, still wearing masks, still following the restrictions, um, but it's just going to open us up a little bit. I mean, we, we were in the UAE before that, so we literally have not seen anybody since mid-February mm-hmm. outside of family. <laughs> true sense of cabin fever um you know just for those who perhaps are just coming to an understanding of you um eric just tell us a little bit about your family dynamic and and what the call of god is on your life and why you're in south africa doing what mm. you're doing yes okay um so i mean my wife and i are i mean she is from south africa um born and raised here we have two kids that were born here luke is two years and seven months now and ethan is about seven months old now um, and basically I came here in 2012, um, to do a school with YWAM called a discipleship training school. Mm. And just basically God just has kept me here since then. Um, uh, my wife and I have started a ministry here called Engage and Embrace, which, mm. um, basically want to train and equip people how to embrace, uh, uh engage with God yeah. through worship, through revival, through understanding the Bible more. Um, And then how do we embrace the world? So what does it look like to love the world um, on a global scale? Um, And we're part of training schools. We're part of, um, yeah, just really seeing young people that have a heart for Jesus and and wanting to mobilize them and equip them Mm -hmm. to go into all the nations um, across the world to share the love of Jesus. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. And Eric, do maybe um, what could we be praying for you? We want to pray for you. What, what things could we be praying for you over the next couple of um, weeks and months? Uh, I think first and foremost, I would maybe just ask for you to pray for South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when the lockdown happened a few days later, 
it got downgraded to junk status, so it's in a recession as well, Um, which has meant a lot of people um, have lost their jobs and their only income, I mean, an average wage in South Africa is about 200 pounds a month. Um, And the government has given about 20 pounds a month for food. And I mean, you you guys know 20 pounds a month to survive is not, is not a lot. So there are a lot of people that are hungry here. There are a lot of people that are struggling to, to, to survive. Basically, Mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of friends and communities that have really, they have no, nothing. They have no income, uh, no way of sustaining themselves. Um, I think, yeah, even some, of our friends that are in missions, um, that live in these communities, that work in these communities, are like, yeah, we've lost our support yeah, from yeah. international locations. Um, so I think just pray for that, I think would be the biggest thing. Um, yeah, I just pray for, I think for us, um, we are, yeah, we're mentoring about um, 20 people on a weekly basis, just discipling. Wow. Um, who with two training schools. Yeah. Uh, we have a seminar that we're starting in Ju- uh, July. Um, we have an engagement brace seminar that we want to start in August. Yeah. Um, podcast that we want to start. Um, so there's a lot of, God has really used this lockdown to open up yeah. um, things. Sweet. But yeah, I mean, we just don't know what South Africa is going to look like no, no. at the end. Yeah. Um, you know. So we brought you here generally because we wanted you to be able to connect with us as a church, um, you know, for you to be able to share exactly what you feel God is doing. Mm. And so, so thank you for sharing. Um, guys at home, you know, could you start to intercede for South Africa mm. right now? Could yeah. you start to lift Eric and Sunel, yeah. you know, two yeah. wonderful children, you know, about to explore a little bit of the outside life? You know, and enjoy the joy of that. But as a family, that, that they'd be blessed financially. Uh, pray that God can meet every one of their needs. Uh, and just start to lift that. We're just going to go to Studio 2. We're poor. We're just going to lead us a little bit of worship. But let's pray for them. You know, lift your hands to heaven. And, and may God cause a revival to break out on that land. Yeah. You know, this is why we're here. This is why we're praying. Mm-hmm. Because we want to see mm-hmm. God do an incredible difference. Yeah. I'm not the wind, your presence is heaven, heaven right here, and breathe on your people, call by your name, show us your glory, lead us we pray, revive us, revive us again. Pour out the power of your presence Awaken, awaken our hearts Open the floodgates of heaven So come like a fire, I come like the wind, your presence is heaven, heaven right here, so breathe on your people, I come by your name, show us your glory, lead us we pray, and we Oh, the world, your kingdom come. 
Put on the comments if you had a specific word for them. Yeah. Um, because we want to make a record of this. If it's something slightly longer that needs a bit of time to type, then can you just email it into info at lovex.com? We'll make sure uh, they get a copy of that because we want to declare the word um, of Eric and Senna and the work in South Africa. Like, Josh, would you want to just lead out a prayer? Definitely. Today? Yeah, definitely. Let's pray together, shall we? Yeah, Father, we just lift up the whole nation of South Africa right now. We do. God, we just pray. Will you break in? God, we pray directly into that financial crisis. God, we speak into poverty. Yeah, we do. We speak into those who are going without food on a regular basis, God. We pray your supernatural provision will begin to just sort of flood that country, God. In every way, will your, will, will your presence be felt in every home, God. We pray there'll be miracles taking place on yes, a daily God. basis. Mm food coming from absolutely nowhere, but it seems to land on the tables of those who need it most. God, we pray for wisdom over the government in this time. We are speaking to them. We help them to manage the resources yes, well. Jesus, Jesus. God, we bring the whole Stoneman family up to you. Yes, God. We pray for Eric and Sonal, Yes. for Ethan and for Luke. God, in this time, will you give them fresh revelation? We thank you for the vision that you've given them already of how to um, communicate with young people, how to continue what they're doing, which is so wonderful through this time and beyond. Yes. God, we pray just where you keep being in those, in those conversations. God, we pray for those podcasts where they really take off, where they be just so spirit-filled. They'll be, they'll be really changing young people's lives when they listen to them. Jesus. They'll be mobilising young people to get out there, yes, to make a difference. Yes. Father God, we just pray right now. Amen. Just want to declare storehouses of provision mm. uh, over you, uh, and and whether that's personally or you as an organisation at Wywam, Musenberg, you know that you actually God would give you favour. I think particularly with food suppliers, I think it's because that's going to be a critical currency over the next few weeks and months. That somehow you get into the food chain, mm. uh, and you actually become blessed with abundance, yeah. uh, and that abundance is there not for your own personal gain but the, the ability to take that favor mm. and to effectively bless the community yes, so may god continue to open up you know to fill your hands to fill your hearts mm. to fill your homes uh, to fill the ministries of that that actually that you just be a resource giver yes uh, to to that so lord god bless south africa mm. right now mm. fill their mm. hands homes, yes, homes with the goodness of god yes lord. so much goodness that they won't know what to do with it but just keep no. giving out uh, we ask in jesus name amen, amen. And before we say that we'd love you to pray for us as a church uh, yeah. so feel free thank you eric yeah um, yeah, I think even just echoing what Gareth and Hannah was just saying, first of all, it was awesome to see those guys and just hear the amazing stuff that is happening in Wales. And I think that's just on a global level, you know, it's not just in the UK where the church is kind of like people are being drawn to church. It's, it's, it's happening here. It's happening. I've had many friends. It's like, yeah, we have friends from all over now that are just intrigued about what, who God is and mm. what he's doing. And yeah, just one of those things that I feel like for you guys is just like, I mean, I, I've seen in the lockdown where the church has now not become a building, but it's become a group of people that yeah. love Jesus. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And I, yeah, I pray that over you guys, you know, I've seen what you're doing in Exeter. I've seen the the need of, hey, let's just, people need food. Okay, let, what can we do? Let's let's get cans together. Let's get stuff together. And um, to really just affirm you guys in that, that you guys are truly living out 
what the church is called to do mm. um, at this moment in time and not to necessarily be restricted to a building. No. Um, so, yeah, Jesus, I pray over Riverside, Lord Jesus, I pray, Father, that you will continue to use their hands, continue to use their feet, yeah. continue to use their mouths, continue to use their talents, continue to use their time yeah. to shine your light into the community, Lord Jesus. Mm. That the people of, of Exeter, Lord Jesus, may may hear yeah. you, may sense you, may may grasp that you are more real than they've ever realized yes, um, before, Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray that you would just continue to use Riverside Church um, yes, in, in Brazil, in, with a partner church in Wales, um, in America, Lord Jesus, that you use the people that you've raised up from uh, from Riverside to to shine Jesus. Lord, to, 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 to connect with those people, to, to be with people, Lord Jesus. And that's what you would do, Lord Jesus. You, you're not restricted to a building, Lord. So, Father, I pray blessing over Riverside, Lord Jesus. I pray that you, even at this time, will just continue to provide for them spiritually, emotionally, mentally, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that even resources, Lord Jesus, that you will just multiply everything in this church, Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray that when the building is open, there is a new hunger and a new passion and a new desire mm. to make Jesus known from Exeter to Devon, mm. across the generation, yeah, across the yeah. globe. So Father, we thank you and we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come together. And Lord, we just, yeah, we're just so in awe of yeah. who you are. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Eric, thank you. Can you pass uh, no. our love on to Sunil? We are praying for I you. Will. Uh, He's probably listening. Probably listening right now. So uh, he's going over, we're waving to Sunil, but um, um, perhaps if you could wave goodbye to the whole church, we're going to have a short, short break as we go to Studio Two while we transition the guests. But uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Eric. A spirit break you heaven come down A spirit break you mm. break your walls down A spirit break you Heaven come down, a spirit break out. Mm. Heaven come down, oh. Mm. So welcome back everybody all over the world the spirit of God is moving and we've started in Wales and see what God is doing there and then we've flown quickly over to South Africa <laughs> yep, yep. you know to see what God is doing for Wild Wild Musenberg and now we're going to go right across the pond <laughs> to the United States of America to the great state of Minnesota uh, and um, Claire Rogers it's great to have you Claire Thank you very much for coming. Now, just people don't know this, I know this, but what time is it is in America right now? It is currently uh, it's currently 20 to 7 in the morning. I got up at 5.45 for you guys today. Oh, so <laughs> Thank you. So good. And you look so great. Yeah. I came up at 5.45. Um, now, it's a big day for you today, isn't it? So, in church, so tell us why it's a big day for you over in River Valley Church in uh, Minnesota. It's a big day because we are reopening for church wow. today, oh, man, um, which is amazing. so exciting. Um, I should say we're re reopening with very uh, strict safety guidelines. So we're reopening 25% capacity okay. um, with touchless worship, deep sanitation, all that kind of stuff. But we are getting to gather together today with the people of God. Yes, <laughs> that is good news. Wow, we're so amazing uh, to see that. So... Um, 
what do you do over the church in River Valley, you know, and just talk us through how God is blessing you kind of in this stage as you're serving him, you know, in the USA. Yeah. Um, the church is a, as an incredibly active church. We've been able to uh, do a lot of work within our communities. I head up the uh, local outreach at my church here. Wow. And, um, and so we've been able to just really... Uh, make great partnerships with a pregnancy crisis center with homeless ministries with needy uh, families all just all across this area which has been really exciting um i personally because i am here as a missionary i don't take a salary from the church so i do get to choose a little bit where i spend my time and so i um also volunteer at a homeless charity uh, in the cities um which houses 400 men Wow. Um, in a separate wow. facility, there are ladies and children in a separate facility from the same charity. And uh, so it's an incredibly um, it's an incredibly humbling thing to see the homelessness on the scale that it is here. But to be able to be a p- small part of the solution is, is great. Um, but you've probably seen on the news, you can't miss it, uh, the, the situation yeah. that is currently happening uh, in the States. It is, um, it is what it sounds like. You know, we can't lie about that. We are actually under curfew between uh, 8 uh, p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning at the moment. Uh, they're closing um, like highways around our area just to try and contain uh, the violence that's happening in the cities. I live about a 15-minute drive uh, out of St. Paul and about a 25-minute drive out of Minneapolis. And um, I went yesterday uh, down into the... Um, down into the city uh, to help with the cleanup efforts. And it is it is shocking to see it. You know, buildings are burning, literally burning. There's smoke still rising from, from buildings that they've tried to put fires out. There's glass just all across the all across the the sidewalks, the pavement, sorry, speaking American. <laughs> all across the sidewalks, um, all across, there's just charred stuff everywhere. The graffiti is very graphic. Um, they graffiti without any kind of um, barometer. So it's all over schools as well as over public buildings. Um, they The police are trying their very best to contain it, are shooting rubber bullets uh, into, into the crowds and tear gas. Um, now, I should say there are people still peacefully protesting, mm. uh, and that is really important to say because not everybody is is causing that level of destruction, <laughs> and they are peacefully protesting for a reason. Um, it is just a proven fact that statistically in the United States, more black people are shot by police officers than white people. That is just a fact. Um, they are victims to police brutality way more than white people. They are arrested at a higher rate. And so the peaceful protest isn't an issue, <laughs> but the destruction that's being caused by the rioters is. And so it's heartbreaking. It's it heartbreaking. Is, and we, we've seen that. And, and if you haven't picked up on the news over the the weekend that was the death in custody of George Floyd uh, and you know we, we, we watched it from this side and man we feel the pain you know there was something of justice that rose up within me as, as I watched that and you know I found it just disturbing to be able to see that but also the reality of what that means uh, for, for many black men across America which is why there is so much um, protesting going in and obviously word of point out some is peaceful but some obviously uh, isn't that so we just want to pray for that as well yeah and, and claire you know as you, you speak about that you know it, it really touches our heart and we just want to know what we can be praying for for you in that situation and also your church as you're going back today which is a great and exciting thing um, as well so what can we be praying for for you yeah i i would just ask obviously of course a typical missionary just pray for this nation yes. pray it is deeply, deeply divided at the moment, deeply divided, um, politically, racially, just there is so much division. Please pray for that. Please pray that there will be peace. You know, that there's yes. in other, other cities, um, people have lost their lives in the riots last night now. Um, wow. that That's just, God have mercy. You know, as I was driving into Minneapolis yesterday, I just cried over the city because it is just so painful. It is so painful to see. So please pray for our nation. Um, but also uh, pray, pray for our church because, of course, we are coming back together <laughs> in, in this backdrop. Yes. God knows what he's doing. He in this backdrop, we are coming Great. together against to worship. And um, there are people who are still very reticent to come back to church. Pray for them. That's fine. We're still offering the full online experience. Pray for peace for those people. I uh, pray for those who are gathering just safety um, as we manage all of the newness of doing church with, with the guidelines of 
So yeah, and right. just for me personally, pray for strength. Yeah. And uh, so it's been a very busy, busy couple of weeks. A lot going on emotionally, spiritually, as well as physically. So that would be great. So, okay, church, this is your moment. Um, I want to take those prayer requests and I want you to speak life and peace mm, yeah. um, right. over not just the nation of the USA, mm. but work right into mm. Minnesota because yeah. there's a hotbed yeah. of civil unrest. You know, pray God's peace over there. Pray for the church that it's able to reach and touch that deep feeling and speak peace into those relationships as they come back together so they can deploy. And also pray for Claire right in the middle of it that she can serve well. So, all just lead us um, in some worship. Mm. We're going to pray in our own spaces mm. uh, and to, to bring change. Thank God, you, God. Come on. Thank you, God. I will build my life upon your love. It is a full foundation. Just in you alone, and I will not be shaken. And I will build my life upon your. right now for Claire um, and for the United States uh, and for the situation in Minneapolis. God, we thank you so much for Claire. We thank you that you have sent her to the nation of the United States and we thank you that she is actually so close to the area where there is so much unrest that she can speak life into that place, that she can see firsthand what you are doing even though it is so difficult, God. God, we lift up um, just the unrest the division, the riots, the uncertainty, God, and we just put that in your hands right now, Father. Jesus. We, not, we might not understand, God, we might look at it and say, what are you doing, Father? But we know that you are God yes. who is above it all. Oh, God. God, it breaks our heart it to does, see God. that. 
But God, we just put you at the forefront of it and we declare that you are king over that place and king over that nation, God. Yes, God. We rest in your goodness in this time. Even though we feel so far away, God, we just thank you that um, Claire is there and we can um, just feel connected to it in some way and just reach out our hand and just yes. pray for that place um, and just pray for Claire and her church as they um, reach out, God. And God, we just pray for Claire's church as they um, they come back to church today. Um, we just thank you that they are able to do this. Um, and we just pray for those that will be worshipping in person. God, may your kingdom come on them as they step out and they worship together. But we just pray for safety in that place. And we just pray for people who that they're not going to be there. They're still going to be watching from home, that they will feel joint and connected to church in that place, God. We thank you for all Claire's outreach and ministry that she's doing um, with homelessness in the community and other community outreach projects. And we just pray that you bless her as she steps out, God, into the forefront of things that are going on in that, in that place and in, in the United States and in Minnesota, God. We thank you that you have sent her to the nation. We thank you for her heart. And we just pray that you bless her right now, Father. Will you just give her strength and energy in this time where things are just changing and shifting so quickly, God? Will she just know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord above it all? Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. We just declare a dove of peace over the yeah. city of Minnesota right now, that the unfurling of the wings of peace as it gently beats, that waves of the radiant peace of Christ would come and just settle. Settle the people, settle the churches, settle the policing communities, settle those who are feeling deprived of their rights and their freedoms yeah. right now, God, yeah. that, that in you, you all things are okay, although a society yeah. may need to change and alter, but in you things are at peace. Yeah, great. Yeah. We pray right now. Claire, would you want to pray for us if that's okay? Yeah, sure. I was just uh, praying uh, in preparation for this today, and... Um, I've been, I read recently the story of the demon-possessed man in Mark uh, chapter 5. And um, at the end, when he had been set free, in Mark chapter 5, um, verse 18 and 19, it says, As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged Jesus that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And um, sometimes we want to have the call to go into the nations, right? Like Eric and Sunel, like myself, like others, to go to another nation. But actually, the majority of us are called to minister right where we are at, at home. <laughs> and you know, Jesus didn't allow that man to go with him. And we're like, that seems a bit mean. But actually, no, it's because he had to bring freedom to his friends and his family right where he was at. So I just really pray that over the life of your church. Let me pray that for you now. Father God, I thank you for the ministry of Riverside in Exeter. I thank you for just the work that they have been doing throughout the generations. I thank you that I am a product of that. I thank you for their continued support and prayer for me here in my ministry. And I just really pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come. You will come, you will move, you will have your way amongst the people of Riverside Exeter. I pray, Lord God, that you will raise them up to do even greater things that they can ask or imagine. God, I thank you for their heart, for the lost, their heart for the poor, the heart for those in bondage. God, I pray that they will see people set free in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. They will see justice yeah. shine brightly like the dawn, God, over areas of injustice in that city. God, I pray that as a minister to their friends and family who are far from you, I pray for a harvest, God. I pray for a harvest for Riverside and Exeter because that is what you want to do. That church, God, you have put there this time. You have put there as a beacon of your light and of your hope. And I just pray for every person listening to this prayer right now who is wondering, are they called of God? God, I pray that they will know your plans and your plans. Yeah, yeah, called right where they are. They are called right where they are to minister to their colleagues, their neighbours, their friends, their family. God, raise them up to be beacons of light, beacons of light to their friends. Help them to hear those words of Mark today. Mm. Just go and be at home. <laughs> go and be at home. Go and be in your Jerusalem. Yeah. I pray for Hannah and Gareth, Lord. They went home to be in their Jerusalem. Yes. God, expand their ministry. I pray for all the other missionaries who will be on this call here today in their nations. God, I get yes. it. I get what 
carry that heart, a heart that is broken for another nation. Lord, bless them too. God, we thank you that today we remember you coming in power and spirit. Yes. Yes. And Lord, I just pray for an outpouring of your power and spirit over Riverside now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Claire, thank you thank for you. praying. Thank you for coming up <laughs> and just joining us. Uh, it's so good, good to see you. Yeah, great. <laughs> thank you for sharing what's going on. But we're going to let you go and see your very full day ahead. Have a, a great, <laughs> wonderful, blessed day. Can you pass our love on to all your team? Um, I will. Pastor Alan as well. And, yeah, uh, I will. So your mum and dad are itching to get across and they're just waiting for quarantine yes. to be restricted. <laughs> but we have to make right. the journey too as well. All right. Absolutely. Lovely. God bless you guys. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 We're just going to take a little bit of reflection now. Uh, just Paul, just lead us in that break while we just move the studio around and get the next guest in. And uh, you're going to really be excited about our, our less, last guest. So welcome back. Um, great to see you all. Thank you for praying with us. We really get a sense of God's presence um, as we've moved from Wales to South Africa to North America. Uh, and now... Muito obrigado por estar aqui. Uh, foi muito bom ter todo mundo orando com nós uh, da África do Sul, da, da, dos Estados Unidos e do país de Gales e agora. And now we're in Brazil with Daniela and Jefferson. Estamos Samantha. em Brasil com a pastora Daniela e o pastor Jefferson. So great to have you with us. Uh, you obviously love his mom and dad. Uh, we've been praying with you and for you for the last 10 days. É muito bom ter vocês conosco. Claro, vocês são a mãe e o pai do Levi. E nós estivemos orando com vocês pelos últimos 10 dias. So if you could, just tell us a little bit about how that 10 days of prayer has been for you over in Brazil. Então, se você puder agora só falar como que foi esses últimos 10 dias de oração uh, no Brasil para vocês. Foi uma experiência maravilhosa. É, nós queremos louvar a Deus pela oportunidade de estarmos aqui com vocês nesse momento. So, um, it was such a wonderful experience and we praise God for this opportunity to be with you right now. Nós Uh, nós queremos dizer que, apesar da distância, nós sentimos um elo de comprometimento e um amor muito grande nesses dez dias. So, even though we are so distant, they felt um, uh, a connection so deep in prayer, in the spirit, in commitment together, in the same, like, goal and focus. Wow. 
e realmente o quanto a família espiritual pode estar unida independente da distância está sendo muito boa a experiência. So this experience made they learn a lot how the spiritual family doesn't depend on distance um being together like yes. personally but just we are together in prayer so that was amazing. Fantastic. What we'd love to do now is for you just to tell us a little about the context of the church in São Paulo in Brazil so that we could pray if quite effectively for you. Então que a gente gostaria agora, é muito bom que você falou e que se você pudesse agora falar um pouco do contexto da igreja no Brasil em São Paulo e como que a gente poderia estar orando por vocês, o que está acontecendo aí. Uhum. OK. Tá. Aqui no Brasil, né, é é, a crise ainda está pegando bastante, né? Nós sabemos que está acontecendo bastante coisa ainda no Brasil. So in Brazil, the, the crisis really is still really bad, and there's a lot of things happening. E por não ter é, é, culto na igreja e as coisas não estão tá acontecendo aqui na igreja, as pessoas ainda estão um pouco é, meio distante, né? Então nós queremos é, reviver essa fé das pessoas, né? Ok, so unfortunately in Brazil, um, because we are not having services in the church, people are not um, looking for a church anymore. It's different than Britain, right? So instead of having uh, loads of people looking live stream, looking for services in Brazil, we don't have people looking. We have people like um, falling, um, just going apart from church wow. and not connecting. Um, getting colder in faith. E nesses últimos dias, uh, nós estamos no pico da pandemia aqui, em especial São Paulo, e yeah. os governantes decidiram voltar às atividades. Well, então, isso tem nos assustado. So, they are like pretty scared like the people in there because like you know, in these last few days we are in the peak of the, mm. the crisis, the pandemic. And some of the government um, governments are coming back with some activities, like releasing people slowly. And now it's the time for enforce the lockdown, and they're like releasing some activities. Um, so that's kind of like scary, and we don't understand why they're doing that. It is. We've seen in our prayers, um, in connecting with you, how you know South America and Brazil and São Paulo has become one of the world's epicenters for the current crisis. So we're aware of that, and that's why we want to pray with you. Então, a gente ficou, a gente descobriu e ficou consciente que de, né, nesses últimos 10 dias, São Paulo e o América do Sul se tornou o epicentro da pandemia. A gente vai estar orando por vocês. Um, so is there anything else specifically that you would love us to pray for you as a church as we do that over the next few minutes? E algo mais específico que você gostaria que a gente orasse por você como uma igreja agora nos próximos minutos e dias? É, eu particularmente tenho sentido que a nossa a igreja yeah. tem se despertado. Ok, so she personally have been felt in that our church, like in Brazil, that her their church has been like having a, an awakening. Yeah, great. Um, mas, uh, mas precisa acordar ainda mais. Uh, para um relacionamento do que para agendas hum. e compromissos e não é não religiosidade yeah. e é o que a gente pede para a nossa igreja. So basically, yeah, they, they have been seeing a, a, a awakening, but at the same time, they feel that they need more to awaken themselves to just a relationship and not to um, things of the church, you know, programs and everything. So it's kind of like they feel that the prayer is Holy Spirit and um, bring us to a close relationship instead of everything else before a close relationship. So we can be ready to come back from lockdown, ready to close relationship. Uh, quero, uh, Levi, yeah. quero tentar explicar melhor. Quando voltarmos para a rotina, yeah. há um incômodo dentro do meu espírito. Yeah. É, relacionamento, relacionamento. Okay. E não... É, religiosidade e agenda. Ok, that's great. Orar so, por isso. She's trying to explain better. There is something in her spirit, uh, in her spirit, saying that when they come back to their normal routine activities, there's uh, the Holy Spirit keeps saying her relationship, He keeps saying to her relationship, relationship, and not routine or agenda. Yeah. 
or religion, you know. Okay. Thank you. We we understand what you've asked for. Muito obrigado, a gente entende. This morning we just um, spoke to the church about looking for an encounter for God because it's Pentecost Sunday. Então nessa manhã a gente falou com a igreja de encontros com Deus porque é um dia de Pentecostes. And to have an expectation of the Holy Spirit to move. E para esperar o, Holy, o Espírito Santo para se mover. And when the Holy Spirit moves, there's an explosion of growth. E quando o Espírito Santo se move, tem uma explosão de crescimento. So church, we're going to pray for the cathedral in São Paulo right now. Então a igreja agora vai orar pela igreja catedral em São Paulo. And pray those things, encounter, expectation and explosion of the E ore essas coisas. Encontro do Espírito Santo, expectativa pelo Espírito Santo e explosão do Espírito Santo. A gente vai estar orando por vocês. So in your home, lift your voices. If you want to type things into the text to send messages across. If God speaks to you about those churches or what's going on in Brazil, type that in. Let us know. Interact with that because this is your chance for, for God to call God to make a difference in that nation. Então na tua casa, levanta a tua oração agora. O pessoal vai orar por vocês. Eles vão comentar se eles tiverem palavras de Deus para vocês. Mas eles vão levantar a nossa nação agora em oração. Vamos orar. Vamos Nothing can compare your living home, your presence. Oh, I've tasted and seen all the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord oh your presence Lord become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your
So intercession when we pray is where we stand in the gap for somebody else's behalf. Então intercessão é quando a gente fica no, no, no meio, quando a gente ora por alguém a gente fica no, no meio, sabe, cria aquela ponte. So guys, in, in your homes, lift your hands up and I want you to reach them um, in faith towards the country of Brazil and the, and the city of São Paulo. Então pessoal, nas suas casas, eu peço que vocês levante a sua mão que vai orar por eles agora e vamos orar por São Paulo e pelo Brasil, nós vamos orar agora por vocês. You know, and as Moses lifted up his staff and the waters parted, allowed them a way through, we're going to pray right now that God allows the church and that country and that city a way through this crisis. Como Moisés levantou o cajado e as águas se abriram, nós vamos orar agora que Deus abra o um mar aí para o Brasil e para essa cidade. When there was no other way, the Lord came through. Quando não havia um, possibilidades, Deus veio e fez a mudança. We pray for breakthrough right now in that nation. Nós oramos por liberdade, por resposta naquela nação. We pray for an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that land. Nós oramos pelo um derramar do Espírito Santo naquela naquela terra. We pray for wisdom on government. Nós oramos pela sabedoria no governo. That they would take the great understanding what needs to happen. Que eles tenham um entendimento do que precisa acontecer. Give them strength to make the right calls and the right decisions. Dá força para o governo para fazer as decisões certas. We pray for the favor and the will of the people to support those decisions. Nós oramos que a população venha gostar e suportar as decisões que eles façam. We pray for the safety of all people. Nós oramos pela segurança de todas as pessoas. We pray for the healing of people who contract this virus. Nós oramos pela cura das pessoas que estão com o vírus. We pray for the recovery of the sick. Nós oramos pela pelo pela cura do, do doente. We pray for the protection of the vulnerable. Nós oramos pela proteção do vulnerável. And Lord, in the midst of all of this chaos. E Deus no meio de todo esse caos. We pray the resurrection of the church of Jesus Christ. Nós oramos pela ressurreição da igreja de Jesus Cristo. We pray for the life of the people of God. Nós oramos pela do, da, a vida dos cristãos, dos filhos de Deus. They wouldn't do things out of religion. Que eles não façam coisas através da religião. Mas que eles façam tudo através do relacionamento do poder do Espírito Transform Santo. Transform their hearts and their minds. Transforma os corações e as mentes. To live for you. Que eles vivam para você. May the church of God be the heart of God. Que a igreja de Deus seja o coração de Deus. Beating with your love for the people. Que eles sejam, estejam batendo com o teu coração pelas pessoas. And as they worship you in their homes. E quando eles adorarem você nas casas deles. Break a heart for what breaks yours. Que você quebre o coração das pessoas pelo que quebra o teu coração, pai. Bless them to be a blessing to their nation. Que você abençoe eles para que eles sejam uma bênção para a nação. Increase their resources to be able to feed the hungry. Que você aumente os recursos deles que eles possam alimentar o faminto. And cause explosive growth to happen on your church during this season. E que venha uma explosão de crescimento na tua igreja nessa estação. We ask in Jesus name. Nós oramos no nome Amém. de Jesus. Amém. Amém. So we've been Amém. praying for the last hour. We'd be really, really honored for you to just pray over us as a church. Então, you know. então nós estivemos orando pela última hora e nós temos muita honra de ter vocês orando por nós. Então, você poderia orar por nós agora? Sim, é, eu estive meditando naquele versículo que diz que o Espírito Santo nos foi dado. So, I've been meditating in the verse that says that the Holy Spirit was given to us. Como consolador. As a counselor. Uh, porque quando a gente fala sobre Pentecostes, a gente fala sobre o poder dele. Because as we, when we speak about Pentecost, we speak about his power. Muitas vezes para exercer o um ministério ou, enfim, as outras funções. And we speak about his power to, like, for the ministry and for everything Mas that we do sinto... for the church. Mas eu sinto de orar uh, como o Espírito Santo como consolador a respeito da Riverside. But I feel my spirit to pray for Riverside as the Holy Spirit, the counselor. Na função de consolador, eu sinto de orar a respeito disso para vocês. So I just feel to pray for Riverside as the Holy Spirit, our counselor yeah. at this moment. Uh, para vocês, representando a igreja da Riverside, colocarem a mão no coração. So I would like to ask for Riverside Church to put your hand on your chest, on your heart. Pai, em nome de Jesus, eu quero colocar diante de Ti, uh, através da vida do Pastor Aaron, 
Father, in Jesus' name, I present you right now through the life of Pastor Aaron. Toda a família Riverside. I present you all the Riverside family. E pedir que o teu Espírito Santo venha como consolador sobre a vida deles nesse dia de Pentecostes. And I pray that your Holy Spirit as the comforter come above their lives in this Pentecost day. O teu Espírito Santo foi nos deixado como aquele que está sempre do lado. Your Holy Spirit was Junto. given to us as the one who is always on your side, together. Eu não sei o porquê, mas o Senhor sabe em que área eles precisam de consolo e de conforto neste dia, nesta hora. I don't know why, but you know why these people, why Riverside family needs comfort in this moment, in this hour, God. Mas nós aqui, como família catedral, queremos ministrar sobre eles. So as cathedral family, we want to pray over them right now. O consolo do teu Espírito Santo. We pray over them the comforts of the Holy Spirit. Alegria. The joy of the Holy Spirit. Júbilo. The joy of the Holy Spirit. Gozo. Paz. The peace of the Holy Spirit. E tudo aquilo que dentro desse projeto de 10 dias eles ministraram sobre todos e todas as nossas vidas. And we pray that everything that they ministered um, on us in this 10 days project. Eles sejam abraçados pelo teu espírito. We pray over them everything you back and we pray that they may be hugged by your Holy Spirit right now. De uma maneira toda especial. In a wonderful way. Nós te louvamos e te agradecemos. We worship and we thank you. Por tudo que nos uniu nesses dias. For this unity in these last days. E nós os abençoamos no nome de Jesus. And we pray, and we pray your blessing over the day in Jesus' name. Não sabemos o que virá daqui para frente, mas saberemos que precisamos do teu, precisaremos do teu consolo certamente. Yeah, we don't know what's coming next, but we are sure that we need and we have your comfort with us, God. É, eu quero te agradecer porque fui consolada pelo teu Espírito Santo nesses dez dias de projeto Vem ao Teu Reino. I want to say thank you because during this Thy Kingdom campaign, I was comforted by you, Holy Spirit. E porque a Riverside foi um teu, o teu instrumento na minha vida, Senhor. E eu quero dizer obrigado para a Riverside Church porque eles usaram suas vidas para trazer conforto para mim. Te louvo por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Então, eu estou muito obrigado por essa família. Em nome de ao redor do mundo orando com várias nações diferentes nações. And three of our guests were missionaries from this church that are now serving all over the world. Três dos nossos convidados que estavam aqui antes eram dessa igreja e estão servindo ao redor do mundo. And our last guest was obviously uh, Levi and his family who have been sent as missionaries to us. E o último convidado foi uh, o Levi e a família dele que estão sendo missionários para a gente. And we're so blessed to have received him. He's such a blessing to us as a, a community and a church. Foi muito abençoador ter vocês e toda a sua comunidade participando conosco. And you should be very proud of him. <laughs> e você deveria ter muito orgulho do Levi. Because we see the investment that you've put within him as a church and as a family. He carries, he's a man who carries the spirit of God. Então ele é um homem que carrega o espírito de Deus. A gente vê o investimento que você e a igreja dele colocou nele. So thank you that through him we've been able to build a bridge with you. Então, muito obrigado que através dele a gente pode construir uma ponte com vocês. Amém. Thank Amém. you for sending him. Muito obrigado por enviar ele. At great pains to you, I guess. Ah, custou muito caro para vocês. Amém, nós agradecemos. Amém. Amém. Agradecemos. We thank you. Um, such a honor. Obrigada por acolhê-lo. Oh, I thank you for accepting him for the family. <laughs> We're going to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for coming online. Thank you for praying uh, with us. If you feel God is still speaking to you on behalf of the Brazilian church, uh, then make sure you put them on the comments or, or write into us, uh, info at lovex.com. We will send them uh, to, to the church out there. 
uh, on your behalf. But keep praying. It is Pentecost Sunday. If you want to come back later, we are doing a South West Awake prayer event, um, and that will be going at 8 o'clock tonight, uh, and that is on live at rediscoveredchurch.com. So please feel free to join us. Other than that, it's farewell from us. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Levy, for thank the work you. you've done over this. Daniela Jefferson, thank you so Muito much. Obrigado. God bless. Deus te abençoe. Amém. Deus abençoe. Bye. Tchau.